All right. Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is episode 70. Today's guest is a veteran actor and producer. You know from so many TV shows, including The Young and the Restless, Days of Our Lives, The Bold and the Beautiful, Growing Pains, from such films as Babe and The Line of Fire. And of course, she was a guest star in two classic Seinfeld episodes, season two's The Revenge and season five's The Sniffing Accountant. Please welcome Patrika Darbo. Patrika, thanks for joining. Woo, hi, hi. Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for, thanks for, uh, for coming, Patrika. So take us back. 1991, can you believe it? That's when The Revenge aired. Um, you just wrapped up Growing Pains, right, in 1990. So how did the how did the role on Seinfeld come about? Tell us a little bit about the audition. Um, was it Mark uh, Hirschfeld? And, and my brain is going, oh, my God, 1991, it's 2021. Like, <laughs> <laughs> 30 um, years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would have had to audition. Yes, of course. I think it might have been Mark Hirschfeld. I'm not really sure. I apologize to Mark if it was him. Um, and in those days, we'd go into the room, and we would meet people, and we would do our thing. Um, uh, and then the, at that point in time, it was probably only between five and maybe maybe six or seven people auditioning for the same role. Now it's about 50 or 60. <laughs> um, and then they made their decision, and we were hired. And that was it. I mean, that was such a, um, it was such a different time. I mean, you were on two episodes. so. Going in, what was the what was kind of the vibe? I, I knew you knew what Seinfeld was, but it was only season two, right? It didn't didn't really take off yet. What was kind of the vibe going in? Well, you know, everybody was you know very friendly and stuff, and they were very excited. They were the second one for me. Um, I was just doing um, step by step at the time. I was just starting the pilot and doing all that, and I'd just come off a film out of Canada, so I really didn't know. I, I was just an actor auditioning. I really didn't know the impact of the show, except for the one episodes, because every actor tries to see everything they audition for. So, um, and I thought, well, well, this is a tight, tight nip, knit, a group of people and wonderfully talented, and uh, maybe I'll get it. Um, and that's what happened, and I did. <laughs> yeah, and you were in, in your season two episode, The Revenge is a... Uh... It really sets the tone for George's character. I mean, he does, you know, a thing Larry David obviously does in real life where he quits and, and goes back to work. And then, you know, you're in the office and you're in those bar scenes. Um, you know, Larry, Larry, I, I actually wrote the episode. How much interaction did you have with Larry, like on the set or? or to be know? honest, none. And to oh, be honest, none. No, no. Oh, if, if, if we got notes, you know, the director would give us notes. Um, I don't think I really got anything from anybody except uh, they were concerned about my hair for the bar scene and how um, at first they were thinking, do I do a wig? No, let's do this, make her hair really look funny um, and those kind of things. But other than that, no, they, as I said, you know, when you go in to do those kind of shows, you, you have your script reading day. And from that point, the script changes periodically. The script you read on the Monday is not always the script you film. The second time you film it, it may not be the same as the first time you filmed it. So um, it, it the sitcom world is very different and other than episodic, even though you get changes, but um, very little interaction with, um, with Larry. So could you, could you tell at that point, 91, I know you, you were doing step by step. You got, came off growing pains. Could you tell the enormity of, of Seinfeld or what it would become? Or did you just think it was kind of, all right, just another role on the sitcom. I, at this point, I'll have to say, I thought it was just another role, though. I thought, <laughs> Wow, these are very talented people and stuff. And, and you know, with Jason, his and Julia, I mean, this was a great ensemble. Right. And to be invited in, and um, Apple, what's his name that played the boss? Apple, blah blah blah. Fred Applegate. Thank you, help yes. me. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'd worked with Fred on something else. I cannot tell you right this moment what it was, but knowing that there was just some great character people in this and. Um, and good comedic people, and and that's not to be touting my own horn, but I think they recognize that in the um, uh, the audition and things, and they really had their fingers on the pulse of the comedy and the situation going on. And I don't know if anybody thought that this would be such an iconic, wonderful show. Right, right, and then, but then, so you come back in season five. At this point, it is an iconic show, right? So, how did that come about? I mean, season five, the Sniffing Accountant, one of our favorite episodes of all time. We had, we had, we had John Capolos on, who played the part of the Sniffing Accountant. Um, 
and it's one of our favorite episodes. I mean, how did the second, so how did that come about? And at that point, yeah, go ahead. (laughs) I have to tell you what I was told about this. I did not audition. I was told that Jerry had seen In the Line of Fire and said, oh, she was on our other show. Get Patricia to come do this. And I was invited to do this. And it was kind of crazy because at the same time I was doing Evening Shade. So Evening Shade did not film on the Monday. Jerry put me in on Monday. So I did his show on Monday and then finished Evening Shade on <laughs> The rest that's of the awesome. Week. That's so great oh. to hear. So he just, that's, that's so great to hear that he just, uh, you know, had you come back. As an, as a, as a performer, anytime we're invited back, um, and believe me, Jerry would have said, I'd like to have her, but it would have had to go through a committee, believe me. And, um, I'm some very grateful cause I'm sure Larry had something to do with that. Um, as Jerry and the, and the other producers and people that were involved. So I'm very grateful for that. And again, to be on two iconic shows and to let you know that when those little sag after checks arrive, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a happy camper. That's right. One more thing here. So on, on that season five, um, did you look at it as you're the same character? Because, I mean, you could have been the same person, right? You could have just been the same person that was in, in season two. You weren't a separate, you know what I'm saying? Like, how did you, did you even think about that? Or how did you? To me, it was just the fact that I was like, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> that, you know, it was that kind of thing. I didn't really envision being the same person and things like that. So, right. um, but again, to, uh, to be invited to come back to this show is like, wow, that's wonderful. Um, and to, and to know that I have so many friends, I mean, um, you know, Danny Woodmer, Woodburn, it's his birthday. Was it today or yesterday? Anyway, oh, but Danny is a close up. friend. We've done several Christmas films together, um, in, up in Canada. And listen, it's, it's a great, great people to work with. Sure. Yeah. That's great to hear. And, uh, it's funny. You mentioned, um, one of my favorite movies in the fire. It's funny that Jerry saw that and like thought of you right away. You played Pam and I think. Southwest Savings Bank, kind of the same, yeah, the same, the same hair you had in, um, um, in the Revenge. Yeah. So that, yeah, I mean, that was pretty interesting with with John Malkovich and the whole, you know, from Minneapolis thing. Any, any similarities on set or with with some of these actors that you know, Jason Alexander is such a you know a well thought of actor comparing him to kind of a John Malkovich. Well, it's, you know, again, I think people forget sometimes that it's called acting. And as actors, we go through a lot of training to learn our craft. We can be vicious. We can be nice. We can be this. Um, John was so wonderful um, when we were off set. And uh, when we had to go on set, he made sure that when the stunt working with the stunt person, when he killed us, that we all were on the (laughs) same page. That sounds so weird to talk about. Uh But with it, when he when he's going to kill you, that it's one, two, three, and I'm going to turn your neck. Not one, two, and three. It's one, two, three. The dead, dead. Like this. <laughs> so, um, uh, and then Jason, of course, his comedic time. And I've auditioned for him. Excuse me, just a second, Jason. I did not get the role. I'm very upset with you. If you're watching this, shame on you. Okay. <laughs> so now that I'm done with that. Now, anyway. But I play, um, Jason is usually, um, for We Spark. it's a, a cancer uh, um, group that he usually sponsors a uh, poker game, Texas Hold'em. And I usually play in his, uh, his celebrity Texas Hold'em games and stuff. Uh, and again, like I said, he directs as well as uh, being a wonderful actor and singer. So Incredible. What, um, I mean, we love hearing these connections, uh, the Danny Woodbury connection and the Jason Alexander. They're so great to hear about. Um, you know, you, your career is, you know, is, is just so impressive. I'm just curious. We've talked to a lot of, uh, guest stars and they all say that the set of Seinfeld is, is a bit different than, than other shows, just the way they do things and the way they run and the way they, uh, maybe the shooting sequence and things like that. Did you notice any of that? Like maybe you can just talk about your experience on the set working with well, Jerome. And- remember I was on the second season and then not until later and stuff. And again, I'm in a parking lot by a mailbox, so I'm not with anybody but Newman. So, right. um, uh, and then the camera and, of course, and the person that yells at the end when I start yelling to my boyfriend um, right. on set, uh, I'm working with a besides the regular ensemble. I'm working mostly with Jason um, and Applegate and the other people in the office. So it, we didn't really have a lot of uh, downtime and time that we did anything. And then in the bar we're doing so. A lot of it was very same as when I went over to Step by Step, our things are different. Now, there I was working with kids, which is a lot different. Mm. But um, basically, I would say it's 
it was a friendly a friendly set i mean sure. there was no there were no divas no problems no that we were aware of as the visiting cast right it's gonna happen but I, I, my experience was wonderful so do, do you remember who johnny was your 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 husband that ran i don't even remember movie? who yelled off stage whether it was yeah, the yeah. director yelling or somebody else when i started screaming at him or so <laughs> i don't know um uh, again like I have to tell you, we're in pitch black right. in an alleyway in the back of the CBS Radford Studios, um, and it was late. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what was happening. So, yeah, you had I felt it was you had two stints. They were fairly small roles, but really iconic lines. Are you yelling, Johnny? Like I'll just it will always resonate when I think of the snippet accountant. And then when George comes back um, into the office, and you kind of snarkily yell at him like what are you doing here like it was just so well acted and i just think you were you're a perfect fit for for both of them um but tell you what did what what was glenda's job do, like what did they give you any background i know you worked for rick bar properties but um what did they tell you as far as um you were kind of trying out for the role about about glenda if you all, remember all the, generally what we get is you know i think at that point i didn't I, Normally, nobody gets a full script. I would have only gotten my dialogue in the office and my dialogue in the bar. I would not know what happens before or really what happens after in the audition. It's not until I get a script that I fully know what's going on, to be honest. And most actors at that point don't. Now, now generally, I usually get a script so, so I can know what's going on. But as a performer, um, most of us are trained. If we don't know what happened, make it up. So... Uh, I just decided that I, John, that um, uh, George, George and I had a contentious relationship <laughs> in the office, <laughs> and um, so I let him have it. So it was kind of like, "You quit. What are you doing here?" You know, until he threatens to pull my wig off. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, do you, what do you remember most? Of, yeah, that, I mean that that's the kind of the scene, right? What do you remember most about that scene? Was there any any like funny outtakes? Anything that didn't kind of make the actual show? Uh, to be honest, I don't even know because we don't get to see them. I, I, to, I don't know. I just know that there was like her hair. We don't like her hair has. To, there was a lot of conversation about how my hair should be so <laughs> that when he says he's going to rip it off, how will he rip it off? And me, because it didn't look that good anyway. So it was um, my reaction had to be with what was going on at that point. Um, I, I wish I could be more helpful with those things, but I don't remember. And I, and I know that I wouldn't have known beforehand what was happening. And a lot of times we're not privy. There's a, the producers. And remember, we have the network. Um, I'm not sure if they talk about if you've been talking about that. But when we have run throughs and stuff, there are about 15 people from the network that have to make it. It's, it's kind of like um, he likes one thing. She doesn't like something. Then there's the guy saying, well, I don't know if we should let that happen. And does she look okay this way? And what will happen if somebody did? So it's it's a committee kind of thing. Um, but you don't too much mess with Jerry Seinfeld or Larry David at this point. Right. So pretty much. And Larry, I think pretty much what he says would go and stuff. But again, he has the ability to say, no, no. Right, and that's in the season five. You mentioned it was really just you and 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 Wayne Wayne Knight uh, Newman on the set and, and the director wasn't. You weren't really there during the rest of the shoot of that episode, um, so you couldn't even tell if there was a difference in sort of the vibe of things by then than they were. No, because at this point, remember, yeah. I don't have I don't have a script. I'm doing right. another show, and they just tell me you're going to be here. He's going to come up, and start stiffing your arm. You're like, what the hell are you doing? And start yelling for your boyfriend. <laughs> Right. So uh, in my mind, I just got off of his motorcycle. He's double parked on the motorcycle. And this idiot is sniffing my, you know, what, you know, yeah. touching me, rubbing me like, what the hell are you doing? That kind of thing. So, um, and I said, okay, here we go. This is it. So, and, and I, again, I didn't know what happened beforehand or after. And now, of course, I can watch it 15 times a day in different places and see what's going on. Oh, look, there I am again. Here we go. So, <laughs> so Patricia, you know, what's interesting. We had, um, Melanie Smith on our show um and she kind of had a I wouldn't say a similar background but she also did a lot of um soap operas right so she said there's kind of like just cultish cultish fans if you will for soap operas and for Seinfeld quite frankly so those are kind of the two things she's best known for I'm curious you kind of play in, in both of those uh pools as well if you will um 
obviously crazy Seinfeld fans like us love you for both of those episodes. Um, do you feel that too? Like, do you, do people it's come up to you for those episodes? It's a, yeah, it's a different, I get, I get, I, listen, I'm in the grocery store and it's either Seinfeld or in the line of fire. Occasionally it'll be one of the soaps and stuff, but those are, those are two iconic things. Generally men will remember Seinfeld or in the line of fire and women, it'll be the soap operas. It's a whole different thing with soap operas. The fans are family. Mm. We go into their homes every single day. So we become a family member. Right. With Seinfeld, it's once a week. But, but it's syndication it, and, and years and Larry, of it. It's real life. To In other words, these are things nobody talks about. Nobody talks about peeing in the shower. Nobody talks <laughs> about, you know, the puffy. Sh and but everybody wants to, but nobody's going to do it. Larry David does it. And Seinfeld was a perfect example of that. And so that's a whole different that's a whole different thing as watching something going, oh, I've thought about that. I can't believe they're doing this. This is wonderful. So it's that kind of difference, I think. Right. And it's interesting because you just touched on some nice uh, Seinfeld polls references. So you are a fan of the show, I'm assuming. The show I, Seinfeld. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm not as avid as you guys are probably the people <laughs> that watch, but I do know a lot of the shows. I mean, I, I will not, you know, the soup Nazi and, you know, get out, you know, you know, soup for you. And those little iconic things that I think, that's Americana to me. Do you, does that make sense? It's yeah, like, of course it does. We're doing a podcast lives. about it. <laughs> but then you know what? I'm, that was stupid. Hello. No, okay. no, no, so, no. no. <laughs> so, but, you know, with Days of Our Lives and why Young and the Restless and Bold and the Beautiful, General Hospital, we become family members to them because we're there with them every day. This show is about things that, oh, my God, I can't believe it. I was just talking to a bunch of people about this. Somebody in the shop, you know. There are little things like that, and it becomes the the little things you turn on, and you know, I don't know, it's it, the dating, the dancing. Come on, Julia Louis Dreyfus and that dance. <laughs> it, America knows about that dance and stuff. So yeah, yeah. Well, listen, America knows about Victor Newman as well. I is he still on? <laughs> is he still on Y and R? Yeah. Oh, honey, he's the icon of Y and R. Yes, there you go, yeah. Yeah, but do you remember him in Rat Patrol? No. Well, listen, I... <laughs> because I, you're listen, a baby. You're a baby. Go look well, that up. I wa listen, I watched it, yeah, with Victor Newman when... Um, what's her name was on it from uh, Desperate Housewives. Uh, Eva Longoria. So I'm going back. What, but is there, like... So you said they're, like, such passionate fans. Like, Are the same fans watching Days that are watching Bold and the Beautiful, or is that, like... Is Most it separate, of the time, like, they just have one soap that they're that they're just rooted right. into. Um, that's, uh, listen, on Days of Our Lives, the fans vote, voted me as the best newcomer. I, I, and I had a, way before I started there, so it was like a newcomer in the business. I won the best newcomer of the year. I got an Emmy nomination out of yeah. it. And that yeah. comes from your peers. Um, it's, it's a whole different thing. But a, a little example, General Hospital, I was on when Duke had a bar. It was the opening of Duke's Bar with Ian Buchanan. Anyway, um, I was the person who, the under five person who was like, here's your peanuts, you want a beer. But I had all this expose that I had to say to kind of fill people up and let them know what was happening. I was in Rio de Janeiro on a boat, not looking good in my swimsuit, but I had this horrible hat on my head in the sun and some lady turned around to get a drink and started screaming that I was Sally in her soap general hospital. Okay. She had no idea who I was, but I was Sally, the waitress in Duke's bar. Incredible. Huh. Okay. Uh, those are, those are diehard fans. They, uh, you know, so when you change things or you, you do something, they'll, they'll write immediately and go, that's not true. She was not married to him. She was married to her. And this is what happened. And they know that their family, they know their family tree and what's going on. And they know the people that were there the same way that Seinfeld people know that's Patricia Darbo. She was at the mailbox. She was in the bar. Her hair got ripped off. Those kind of things. <laughs> so, and you know what, as a performer, and I'm sure you're learning with your podcast, you can't do it without your fans. Yeah. And, That's and, and the, you know, they are the best. I'm grateful to each and every one of them. And I, um, 
I appreciate them. And um, I, I think you guys will realize that that's who makes and breaks you is making sure your fans love and adore you and that they like what you do. And they'll be first to tell you, what the hell were you talking about there? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and like and like you said earlier, I mean, that's the reason why these shows last and why the reason shows have these fans is because they recognize the talent from everyone. The person at the bar that's handing out the peanuts, the person in one scene, they only pick the you know the best people for, for these roles, no matter how small those roles might be. They're not small because you're, you're a part of the ensemble. And uh, that's what Seinfeld did. It, it picked the best guest stars, you know, including yourself, obviously. And, and I'm and very she, grateful for that. I have to tell you, to be a part of that. And look, at you've created a whole show around it from a show that went, I mean, and every time you turn around, it's on another network and stuff. This, this is perfect television. This is wonderful television. And I think on a personal note for me, because there's so much television now and so much streaming that if Jerry was put on now, he might not be end up being as iconic as he was then. It's timing and things that are very perfect. And he was at the perfect time where everybody related to it. And there wasn't all, all the other crap going on. Pardon me to other people that have crap out there. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were in, you were in, a, we're we're partial to the early years so seasons two through five are our favorite and you were part of that but you know it's another common theme in Seinfeld I just I figured I'd ask you is baseball and I know you you have a special connection with your your father worked for the Braves organization right you might it was my stepdad he started out in Boston with the Boston Braves he went to Milwaukee with the Milwaukee Braves then they moved to Atlanta and before he passed he left that organization and he went to work for the Houston Astros before he passed away he was known as the biggest little man in baseball. He was only four foot two. We called him Booby High. Anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, he uh, his name was Don Davidson. He wrote a book called Caught Short. Yeah. So. Oh, very nice. So yeah, I mean, I just that's great to hear. And I know. So are you are you still a Braves fan today? You know what? I'm really not. I'll go with my Dodgers. I've lived here the longest time. I don't watch as much as I used to. Um, I grew up with the 56, 57 Braves when they won the series. So, uh, you know, Hank Aaron, who we just lost, Johnny yeah. Matthews, uh, Warren Spahn, a lot of the greats. So, yeah. Wow. Good I know I look damn good, but I'm an old doll. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, your career has been incredible. I mean, you, you're, you're nominated for awards like 20 years apart. That shows you something. I mean, it's just like, you know... You, you keep Very going, nice. baby. You just keep going. That's right. That's right. And the royalty checks keep coming. Well, actually, are the, <laughs> yeah, are the, the royalty, are the royalty are, checks the same for each show? I'm just curious. No, no. You get I get checks for zero. So uh, they dwindle yeah. down like this. And so it's kind of very frustrating for most actors to get a check that somebody had to sit at the computer and do, enter all the stuff, put a 40, whatever the mailing thing is, 40 cent stamp on it, mail it out and have it delivered. And it's for zero. That's crazy. It literally yeah. <laughs> like mm. <laughs> and soap operas have no residuals unless it's foreign. And those are generally ten cents, twenty cents, thirty cents. Not a lot of money. Mm -mm. <laughs> but you're you are you are still having fun, no matter what, right? You know what? If you don't do what feeds your soul, then it's not going to work. I mean, I'm not a woulda, coulda, shoot a person. I held down another job for 20 years before I started acting full time. Um, and I, I did acting part time and I'm, I'm still here. And I think if you can, if you dream it, you can have it. I, it may sound, you know, kind of corny, but again, go for your dreams. Don't let anybody tell you, you can't have it. What, what job was that for 20 years? <laughs> you know, the speakers, JBL. Yeah. 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 I was their national credit manager. Before really? you, before you, before you, before you even started acting, or while you were kind of no, doing. No, I it? was still acting, honey. Listen, okay. you can look up the Jeffersons. I did the Jeffersons, different strokes. <laughs> right, right, different Give me strokes. A break. Yeah, we knew that. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh yeah, uh, been around, baby, been around. But I never took vacation. I would turn in vacation time when I got a job. So it's, uh, but I was, I couldn't wait tables because I'm not real good at that. <laughs> I'm not real good at that. So um, uh, I, I came from Atlanta. I came to California from Atlanta. I had been an investigator uh, there and I worked my way up and um, I'm very grateful to JBL for putting up with it until they got a new man in that said that acting didn't fit the corporate image. And I kind of went, let's see my salary for here and my salary for here. Acting was above it. And I went, bye bye. So long. Farewell. <laughs> bye. And it was probably the best thing, you know, it's like that. 
that other corny thing when the door closes and the window opens or another door opens, it's what happens. So again, if you want it, go after it, you can have it. Yeah. I mean, uh, and listen, like that's great advice. And you know, we've heard and read about the revenge on Seinfeld and the cast considers that episode, the actual turning point where actually it just really took off. So, I mean, you got to be proud to be part of something like that, that ended up being considered, you know, one of the best shows of all time. It is, I mean, it, it, and it speaks to the fact it, that's the other thing at that particular time, a lot of our, our great stand-up people were starting to do TV. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I mean, I think just across the lot where I was doing, uh, give me a break. I was, I did, um, uh, let's see, I, I already told you I did evening shade. Then I did, um, Brett, Brett, um, what's her name? Brett, Brett Butler, Brett Butler show, yeah. which I can't think of the grace, name of it. grace under fire, grace under it? fire. Yes, uh, I did that one. So all of those were on the same lot and things like, so George Carlin. Yeah. Yeah. I'd got to play his wife, not Carl. Yes, I played his wife, George Carlin. And what well, his Zan, you, I mean, you, you've done it all. You've yeah, done it all. I mean, that's. Uh, I, mean, I haven't done it all because the there's more to do. More to do. That's right. What do you so, have? What do, What do you have coming up? I mean, I know there's a few uh, a few shows in post production, at least according uh, well, to IMDb. Right, but I let you. I guess tell right us. now, for me, I'm still I'm still kind of recurring on Young the Restless. I'm. Right. I don't know when I'll get a job there. I just I do commercials too. I just did a commercial, so. Uh, you know, an actor who loves to work and I just keep doing it and plugging away. So um, <laughs> I'm doing Studio City, which is a web series. Um, and that's what I got nominated last year for, for an Emmy. Yep. Um, so, um, you know, I just keep working and doing stuff. So well, we'd lo- I'd love to see you, you know, do a JBL commercial. So it all comes full circle. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That would be yeah. something else. Yes. Well, uh, Patrika, <laughs> this was a blast. Thanks so much for, for taking some time and taking a trip down memory lane with us. We, we really appreciate it. You're just, you're a, you're a class act and a sweetheart. Yeah. Delightful. Thank you guys Thank you. very much. Thank you very much. Be safe. Wear your masks when you get out of there. <laughs> Everybody wear your mask, please. Anyway. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. Much success. Talk to you later. I got to find the right button. That's why I'm rattling on now. (laughs) Have a great night. Thank you so much. Have a good one.